Hey, John Kohler. Hey, what's up, Victoria? So, John is visiting me in um, Hawaii, okay, and we're having a great time, right, John? Yeah. Farmer's market tonight. Got some good stuff. Yeah, I mean, this is like a treat, you know, he's visiting here in Hawaii, and, you know, you never know where things go, like, as far as organic farmers and uh, people that he meets all over the place in farmer's markets that we just went to. He was talking about how, you know, you just want to visit their farm and maybe give talks. And, and I was telling people that he sells juicers and they were really into it. So you never know how things can go and, and just, you know, how organically things happen. So it was really nice and really good treat. He's also kind of telling me things about how he got started. And it really is inspiring and I'd like you to hear his story. As he told me last night, I want you to repeat it. All right, sure. So, Victoria, how I got started, and for everybody out there, actually, is many people may or may not know, and there's videos on YouTube where I already explain and share my story, but I'll share with you guys, because you might not know. And it's very important, you know, I, in my teachings, you know, one of the things I think I like to teach is that you want to do things for a reason in your life. And the reason why I got into raw foods is because literally I had to, to save my life. And think about it. If you got into raw foods to save your life, and you thought in your head, like, this is what I thought, honestly. If I eat cooked foods, I'm going to be in the hospital. I might lose my life and not be here. That's not a fun place to be. It'll keep you raw. So, I mean, in the early years when I got into this, it was literally strictly willpower that, you know, kept me going. So, here's what happened. So, after I was in college, I graduated college. I was playing broom ball with the fraternity brothers. Yes, I was in a fraternity. and It might be hard to believe. But um, I got sick. I got stricken with spinal meningitis, the viral version of spinal meningitis. I thought I had like flu-like symptoms and I remember taking Theraflu, like some medicine, you know. But I just remember throwing it up and like I, to this day if I smell that stuff, it'll make me sick. And then uh, anyways, that's a whole other story. But <laughs> <laughs> So anyways, I got taken to the hospital. I was like uh, just had a really bad headache and was throwing up and literally as I got to the hospital, I passed out actually. They put me in a wheelchair. Throwing up, vomiting, I passed out as I got admitted. And all I remember is I woke up in intensive care unit with like IVs in my arm. And I'm like, holy jeez, what's going on here? And I asked the doctor, hey doctor, when am I going to get out of here? And the doctors told me something that I thought I'd never hear, especially at such a young age. Like, you might not make it out of here. I'm like, whoa, this is not cool. Like, this is not supposed to happen to you. You're like 50 or something or like real old, 60 like my grandparents, right? But here I was in my 20s and potentially not gonna make it out of the hospital. And this is not a fun place to be. I don't care whether you're 60, 70, 100, 20, 15, I mean, any age, it's not fun to know that you're possibly at the end of your life. You know, I thought about a lot of things because I had a lot of time to think. I mean, they did a spinal tap and, you know, they said I had spinal meningitis and I might not make it out of there. A lot of people don't. I know, a lot of people lose their lives and it's not, I know. it's not funny, I you know, and like, it was serious. I mean, yeah. I might be joking about it now and I will say that it is the best thing that ever happened to me in my life because I've turned it all around and it set me in the course I am on today, but at the time it was not fun at all. <laughs> um, but I did have a lot of time to think and I thought about a lot of things while I was in the hospital because aside from eating the crappy hospital food and watching the TV and stuff, I really didn't do much because my back was hurting because they did a spinal tap and I had a lot of time to think. So I thought like, okay, John, what's really important right now in this moment? Like, is it, would it be important if you did have the million dollars, like the American dream, like we're all supposed to want 2.2 kids, a dog and a nice, you know, convertible car, sports car, you know, like we're all taught to believe to really desire and want. That wouldn't have done nothing for me. You know, there's like super rich people, you know, whatever. Um, Steve Jobs, I mean, they, people lose their lives all the time because they're not looking after the most important asset they have in their life. And that's not their butt, especially if you're a lady. But it's what it is, it's your health, right? Your health is your greatest wealth. And I know you guys have probably heard this before, but most people don't really take it to heart, right? I want to encourage you guys to take this to heart because I almost lost my life. And I learned that even if I had a million dollars, I wrote a check, Mr. Doctor, one million dollars, do not cash unless John walks out of here. He couldn't guarantee that was going to happen. I mean, even, yeah, people with tons of money lose their lives all the time. And it's not about how much money you have. Like, to me, it's about how much health you have, right? And not just length of time, just it's quality. It's life. quality time. Like, I have so much energy to do whatever I want on a daily basis, go to bed late, wake up early, which is not often. But I could do that, you know, because I don't need as much sleep as I used to need Look prior. younger. Yeah, look younger, anti-aging, be healthier, you know, 
So anyways, um, I learned this, and also during that time, I, you know, had uh, made prayer, and I prayed that I would make it out of there, because the doctors had no treatment for me. So I literally was up to higher powers, and I made it out of there. So as you guys know, I'm here now. So I made it out only through higher powers, is what I like to say. You had a higher calling. calling. Yeah, a higher calling, and I made a promise. I'm like, mm -hmm. okay, if I make it out of here, because to me, like, money is not that important. Like, to me, my health is more important, and this changed when I was in the hospital. Like, okay, if money's not important, what are you supposed to go for and what are you supposed to do in life? Because we're all taught, like, you got to make the most money and if you have the most money, then you're the most successful. But that's that's not what I figured out in the hospital. I learned, like, man, like, the health is my most greatest wealth and if I get out of here, I promise to share what I've learned with other people to increase and better their health too so I could be a, a true, you know, value to society and to people and to others in life because, you know, other people is what is all we got really, you know, it's not about just going and making money and all this stuff because you could be, have tons of money and be lonely at the end of the day, right, but we need other people, community, and to me it's just about like helping other people. So luckily I made it out of there, as you guys know, and now I'm dedicated now to like helping others and I work tirelessly to make videos and make content and share what I've learned over these last 19 years now since I started Raw Foods in 1995. Wow. Yeah, so that's how I got started. And then the whole interesting thing was that when I was going out of the hospital, I asked the doctor, why did I get the spinal meningitis? Like nobody else, all my friends that I was hanging out with, my fraternity brothers, nobody else had the spinal meningitis except me. And what he explained is he says, John, you know, just like everybody has an immune system. Maybe you have a husband, maybe you have a wife, maybe you have a girlfriend or boyfriend, maybe they're sick with the flu, maybe they have the cold, but you don't get sick, right? That's because you have a strong immune system and your immune system fights it off. But I was not that lucky. Like, my immune system is not as strong as a normal person. And for those of you guys that are a little bit older, you might have seen this movie called The Boy in the Bubble. It's like in the 70s. And this boy had to live in a bubble, like a plastic bubble. And if he had any outside contamination, bacteria, or whatever, viruses, he could lose his life, like, instantly. Like, instantly. So, like, I'm not like the boy in the bubble, but I'm not like the normal person with a normal immune system. I'm, like, somewhere in the middle, right? So the doctor said I had what's called complement immune deficiency, which they blamed on my genes. So basically, I had a bad luck of the draw with the genes. And this was kind of apparent, too, because I had other health challenges as a child. I had asthma, I had allergies, I had uh, ichthyosis, and eczema, which are all autoimmune-type conditions, as I later discovered. So this was not super surprising. There were signs that you didn't even know yet, you know? Right, yeah. And it was just like I was, just, I was a train wreck waiting to happen. So if you have any of these symptoms, you should know that your immune system is a little bit off. Yeah, I mean, but there's so many care of it now. there's so many other symptoms that you might have, whether it's chest pains, whether it's headaches, whether, I mean, everything, your body tells you things for a reason, and you don't just ignore it and put a bandaid over it and take a Tylenol to make your headache go away. You need to figure out what's causing it and remove the cause. I mean, that's the whole goal. It's not like put a bandaid, you know, over it. And So anyways, what I figured out was that I had a weak immune system. I got out of the hospital in that situation. The doctors wanted to give me a, like an immunization against meningitis, but the immunization is only for one other kind of meningitis, and there's different kinds, and the strains are, who knows, you know, changing all the time or whatever. So I'm like, I don't want any of your medicine, because like, I don't know if that's going to work, because they couldn't guarantee I was going to get better. But what I did take from that is that, John, you know what, you need to do something to build your immune system, because you have a chronically weak immune system. And if you don't do something, the doctor said you could be back in the hospital with meningitis again or some other disease and I would not be so lucky because I was more compromised and had a weak immune system and was more susceptible to things. And at the time I thought I was a pretty good vegetarian who ate chicken and fish and read my ingredient labels like many of you guys might think you eat healthy. But boy, I just really wasn't eating healthy. You had to or, go that extra mile because your motivation was death. <laughs> exactly, exactly. And I want to, you know, I went I mean, in for vanity, you went in for life. <laughs> So, Doesn't matter how you get there, really. So yeah, I mean, whatever your motivation, have a strong reason to do it, right? So all I knew when I left the hospital is that I needed to do something, you know, to build my immune system, and I had no idea what. I had, a, I was a business major in no college. Internet, and, there was no internet. Yeah, there's no time. internet at the time. But you had television, and, and what did you see on television? Yeah, so uh, basically, long story short, I moved to Alabama because I was living in California. I moved to Alabama and uh, played a lot of pool because the Guys I uh, was roommates with had a pool table in the front, so I got pretty good at playing pool. 
But besides that, sidebar, there wasn't yeah much. There wasn't much else to do in Alabama. <laughs> but we had a TV, right? We got TVs in Alabama. That's good because look what it did. <laughs> Tell them what. So what happened was I had a lot of watched a lot of late night TV. So I saw an infomercial. Jay Cordich, the Juice Man. I know many of you guys seen that Jim Carrey impression of the Juice Man, <laughs> juicing all kinds of stuff in the juicer. Hilarious. <laughs> yeah, Hilarious. yeah, right. And um, so I, all I needed to hear was in the Juice Man infomercial. He says. Okay, juicing builds your immune system, you could lose weight, have more energy, blah, blah, blah. But all I needed to hear was, build your immune system. I heard those words and I'm like, wow, this is the thing I've been needed to do all these years to build my immune system. So I got on the phone, ordered that juicer, and this was not in the internet age. You know, they didn't have Amazon Prime where you get things in two days right. or even most things are shipped, uh, you know, uh, transcontinental right. nowadays in like five days, even right. with FedEx Ground, they right. are faster than UPS. <laughs> but yes, um, <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> but nonetheless, um, I started. I bought the juicer, and then they said it's going to be there in like three weeks. Right. I'm like, three weeks? I can't wait. It's my health. That's at stake. <laughs> There's that oxyclean guy again. Yeah, right. I'll, I'll sell you anything. Yeah. No, it's good. It's good. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, <laughs> you know, an infomercial. You could do an inf infomercial. Actually, I was asked. Some company wanted me to do a juicer infomercial. Yeah, you could totally. You're the new juice man. And Jay would love that. He would pass the, the baton down to you. Or yeah, the crown. I mean, I, I, or the juicing crown. I think the whole thing about juicing is the just. The juice eating man more fruits and made vegetables. another juice man. I mean, what do you do? You sell juice juicers for a discount. You know everything about a juicer. I couldn't believe what you knew about my juicer. I mean, you know everything about juicers. I know about everything. Today I, I know more than most people for sure. Today he went to farms and he got really good prices for pineapples and greens and he mixed it and put it inside the juicer. And then what did you put a, a coconut meat? We did coconut meat to help it push through because it was Fresh getting coconut. clogged up. Well, I put the coconut meat in the freezer and then it really it pushed it down and you knew exactly what to do. I've been playing with juicers a long time. They're fun gadgets. Yeah, so you're the new juice man, but you were saved by the juice man. Yeah, so yeah. I saw his infomercial, and then I ordered the juicer, and it wasn't going to be there in time. I had to wait too long, and then I went down to the local Walmart, and as luck would have it, they had a juicer on clearance sale for twenty four ninety seven. He remembers the exact uh, change. Yeah, <laughs> I, I like getting good deals on stuff. Side note. Yeah. Another but side note. Anyways, <laughs> um, I bought the juicer, brought it home, and started juicing like the juice man did on the infomercial, and guess what? Like... It didn't make a lot of yield, and actually at one point it started smoking, and I'm like, oh my gosh, this thing's defective. It's not doing what the Juice Man infomercial did. And so I took it back to Walmart, and they got a good return policy, and save your receipts. <laughs> and, then, <laughs> and then they had one extra one. They had one left, so I got that one ticket home, and guess what? Same thing happened. So at a young age, I learned that all juicers are not created equal. And I learned, you know, a reason for paying more for a juicer because it's probably better. I mean, you get what you pay for. I mean, you guys know that, yeah. hopefully. And so, so then finally I, I got the Juice Man juicer, started juicing with it. I was juicing for six months and I felt great and started eating more raw foods. Although I didn't know that I was eating actually raw foods. Because uh, what I would do is I would skip my normal breakfast and I would just make like, basically I juice five pounds of carrots, which would make about four to five cups of juice, depending on the juicer, and depending on how fresh the carrots are. And then I'd have my regular lunch, and then mid-afternoon I'd have more fresh juice, as much as I wanted. And then for dinner I'd have my normal dinner, and I wouldn't, I didn't really change my diet. I mean, I was a pretty good vegetarian, tried to eat a lot of whole foods, but I still ate a lot of processed stuff and had chicken and fish. But after doing this for six months, I was feeling good, and actually I moved back to California. I was actually in a health food store, and on the bottom shelf of a health food store, there's a book that I picked up called Cleanse and Purify Thyself. And it was a book by Dr. Richard Anderson, and I hadn't read a book since college. And usually I don't really particularly care for reading too much, but I picked up this book for some reason. I started reading through it, and it was really captivating. It made, like sucked me in and drew me in. And I must have stood in that health food store for like 15 minutes, like reading the book. And the book's only that thick, so it wasn't that much of a read. And then I was like, man, John, if you're reading it this much and you like it so much, you should just buy the book. Another side note is that I bought the book, and then an ex girlfriend that I let the uh, let borrow the book lost it, so I don't even have that book anymore, which sucks because it's. Are you out, out print. there? Maybe you could send it to John Fuller. <laughs> no, she doesn't know where it is. <laughs> Anyways, I was like, don't worry about if it. If anybody finds a book like that, send it to John. It's like the first or second edition of the Cleanse and Purify That Self book. What but, was the turning point? Were you in the shower and you're? Well, so yeah, so what happened was this book talked about colon cleansing, you know, with herbs, psyllium, bentonite, and chlorophyll, and then drinking lots of water, and they said in. The book you could drink as much fresh juice as you want, but you shouldn't go on this cleanse 
unless you already alkalinize your body by juicing for six months, which I had been doing. So I think things happen for a reason. And then what happened was I got on this cleanse, right? And in the, in the book, they said, if you're going to go on this cleanse, you shouldn't go back to doing what you've been doing, like eating cooked foods to get toxified up again, because this cleanse will clean you out. And in the book, they had many testimonials from people like building their immune system once again, uh, clearing up things like psoriasis and other skin conditions. And, you know, I said earlier that I had a skin condition since I've been a child. And even the doctors could not clear it up. I mean, I, they gave me hydrocortisone creams. You and all. teased a lot. Yeah, like because my skin was so dry, I looked like a, they, kids call me snake skin, lizard skin, and it hurt, you know. And, and like I think around when I was 10 or 11, I asked the doctor, okay, Dr. Messina, that was my pediatrician can you give me something for this? And he, he, nothing ever worked. And then he said, like, okay, John, you're going to grow out of it when you're 13 because your hormones will kick in. So, like, every year I'd, like, get so excited on my birthday. Like, okay, 10, 11, 12, nothing ever changed. Okay, it's my 13th birthday. The doctor said that I'm going to grow out of it, right? Guess what happened? Nothing. Nothing <laughs> changed, you know? I mean, I think doctors sometimes can be full of all BS. But anyway, that's a whole other topic. <laughs> So, another video. Yeah, nothing changed, and then I was kind of let down, and here I am, a teenager with dry skin. I'm like, what girl is going to want to date me? So, like, actually, I didn't date that much. Actually, I, actually, I didn't date at all in high school. He's and, single now, though, ladies. And I had actually a, I had a, I had a blind date for my prom. Oh, that was man. pretty crazy. But, I, you know, if, if, you want, if you want to tell people now how much your life changed, like, you, you did complete change around since the time that you were 13 till now. Or even eight years old. Right? Oh yeah. You... Till now, I mean, you're living a better half the second half than the first. Yeah, it's not. It's like my chapter first quarter. Two. My chapter first two quarter. is better than chapter one. Yeah. It's like he had a rebirth day when he went to the hospital. So let me keep going. So what <laughs> happened was, uh, I got to backtrack here. So when I bought the Juice Man juicer, he gives like six cassette tapes. So this kind of dates it a little bit. But on the first cassette tape, he said one thing that I'll never forget. He said, he said. The one thing that prematurely ages you faster than anything else is cooked foods. Don't put cooked foods in your body. And when I first heard that, I'm like, who's this whack job that's saying don't eat cooked foods? Everybody I know eats cooked foods. My parents, my grade school teacher that taught me the four food groups. That's got to be right, right? <laughs> I mean, everybody everybody eats McDonald's. I mean, we yeah. ate McDonald's when I was kids. I mean, everybody eats cooked foods. I'm like, I hit stop on the cassette. I would not listen to the rhetoric, but I'd flip it over and hit play, and then he'd talk about, oh, you know, for your skin, juice, you know, I don't know, cucumbers, cilantro, parsley, and apple. And he'd all these cool juice recipes that I would make. And then uh, furthermore, when I got up into that cleanse, it said in the cleanse, once again, if you go on this cleanse, afterwards, you should eat only raw foods because you're going to clean yourself out, and there's no point in eating cooked foods that will toxify your body. So I'm like, whoa, what's up with this raw food stuff? Like, it's it's... Maybe important, but I like still didn't want to believe it because nobody did it. I mean, this is back in like nineteen yeah, ninety yeah. mid nineteen nineties. So I'm like, okay, well, I'm gonna try this cleanse because I had enough faith in it. The book was captivating me, and it was basically about two hundred dollars worth of products in two weeks of my life to do this cleanse. I drank as much water as I wanted on the cleanse originally. Later, when I reread the book, it said you could have as much juice, but I didn't do that the first time. I think things happened for a reason because I had repeated the cleanse with juice and I didn't have the same effects as when I did it the first time with the water. But anyways, I went on the cleanse and my skin had cleared up for the first time in my life. You were in the shower and you saw it actually. Yeah, it was crazy. So like I was actually uh, renting a house. I was in the shower, never really looked at my body. I like looked at my whole body and my skin was 100% clear like a normal person. Amazing. And I was like, I started crying in the shower. I don't know if it was crying because I was so happy that my skin had cleared up and this had never happened before. The doctors couldn't do it, over the counter, under the counter, nothing could do this or, except this cleanse. Or you don't know if you were crying because... Or I don't know if I was crying because I had to eat this damn raw food diet for the rest of my life and I'm like, holy shit, nobody does this. What am I going to do? How am I going to survive? How am I going to get my protein? I mean, you know, all those crazy yeah, questions. So if there's any mothers out there, you know, I relate more to mothers, but if there are any mothers out there that see their children are having problems with eczema, or any allergies or anything like that, maybe just keep juicing something for them. They won't even know the difference. Don't tell them that you're doing it. Just give them a juice and they won't even know that it's good for them. Put lots of pineapple, fresh ripe fruits in it and make it green and say it's Shrek juice or something like where it's like 
oh, it's like a magical juice and make it really, really exciting for them. And, you know, before you know it, they'll crave that instead of soda or something else that they're used to. And the reason why they got there is, well, you had a gene. His brother had it also, the spinal meningitis. But besides that, he's living proof that he got out of it even with the gene, which is amazing. And then if you have allergies or anything like that, see what happens with juicing and you sell juicers for a discount. He knows everything about these juicers and he knows that it works. He knows that the, the uh, best way to get, you know, better is just to, and to feel better because you felt so badly is to have certain juices or fruits and vegetables and make that mostly the part of your life. And then you'll see, you'll wean off of the other foods slowly but surely and you'll start to really start look at the greens as food right i think that's totally it victoria i mean the juicer is just a tool it's a tool that allows you to eat more fruits and vegetables so whether you have a juicer or a blender or whether you're going to use your your teeth you know the whole point is to eat more fruits and vegetables juicers and blenders allow you to concentrate them so you can actually get more than you normally would which i think in this day and age because we're not living 200 years ago when we didn't have all these pollution and all this crazy stuff going on. I think that's definitely a good thing to kind of, you know, get a little bit more. Plus, the food that's being grown, even organic fruits and vegetables, are not as high quality as I would want them to be. And the in, GMOs that you And the GMO, about. I mean, with the industrial, you know, food system, they just are not putting things back in the soil they need to, to have the highest quality foods. So that's why I also teach, and are probably really excited about these days, about growing my own food and teaching others how to do that too, to have the highest level of health. Because you, if you're eating deficient food, whether it's organic, conventional, or whatever, you're not going to have your reach your health potential if you're missing things like trace minerals, for right. example. Yeah. And more importantly, the phytonutrients and phytochemicals that are in you know different foods. I'm learning and a lot, and I've been in this for a while, and I'm still learning. I'm learning from him. I'm learning from somebody that's staying with me now. This woman, Steph, Stephanie Tassone, and I'm just really learning and relearning. And every day, I'm learning something new. And I'm taking away something out of it, and I'm hoping to share it with you. And uh, I was happy to share John's life with you because the truth is somebody else might be going through the exact same thing, or if not worse. And, you know, cancer, don't rule out, you know, a healthy diet because you really are what you eat. And if you make up, your body makes up all the foods that you're eating, and it goes into your cells, and that's what becomes you, then... You know, you're in for a surprise. I mean, you're going to see the results. You're going to see the results are here. I mean, you're thriving. You look so much younger than your age. And um, ladies, he's single. I just wanted to let you know because, you know, here he is, John Kohler. <laughs> and um, thank you very much for teaching me so much and um, being here and giving the interview and, you know, letting people know that there is a way. There's a way out. And if you're lucky enough, you have that second chance. So why not... Try not to get to the first sickness. Try to avoid that. Just prevent it by doing what he's saying. And uh, if you are sick, at least you know that there is something that you can possibly try before anything else. Right? Yeah. I, I mean, I pretty much would definitely agree with Victoria on that one. If you want to learn more about my raw food teachings, you can check me out at okraw.com. I also teach about growing food at growingyourgreens.com. I also have juicer demonstrations and blender demonstrations. And uh, talk about all the different appliances at discountjuicers.com and my YouTube channel, youtube.com slash raw foods. And he'll be at the Woodstock Fruit Festival this year. Yeah, I want to see you guys at the Woodstock Fruit Festival. It's going to be a grand time. Yeah. Okay, we'll see you there. Take Bye. care. Bye.